what is this this is the cut open section of the uterus yes that we have appreciated over here now what what are these portions these are the fallopian tube plus the ovary part is there okay now along with that what we see over here if you can appreciate normally over here it would have gone somewhat like this normal yes sir. but over here do you see any any abnormality exophytic mass yes exhibiting yes, areas sir. of hemorrhage necrosis abnormal irregular mass so this is your invasive invasive exophytic exophytic cervical carcinoma why am i telling you now can you appreciate over here this is the basement membrane this is the basement membrane and can you see a part of tumor has come out yes so we will say this is the invasion that is occurring this was basically an h cell okay this was an h cell a carcinoma in situ and basically we can appreciate the invasion of the cervical stroma yes everyone can see there is an early invasion okay showing an invasive nest which is breaking through the basement membrane of high grade squamous cell intraepithelial lesion okay h cell okay this is your invasive keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma now you can see these are all nest these are all nest of malignant squamous epithelial cells showing what is this characteristic thing called as the squamous pearls as we can see the keratinization is there so it is called as invasive keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma so noma today so the average age of presentation of cervical carcinoma is around 45 to 50 years now for example the women sexual activity started at around 25 years okay then also they are having a 20 year gap in between that is why we have developed what is called as your Uh, uh screening process we have the pap screening in place which is which can effectively uh, it can detect any precursor lesion and can provide the treatment for the same earlier if you remember cervical carcinoma now from today for maybe around 8 years 10 years back okay in the in those times cervical carcinoma was the most common carcinoma in women in our country but today it is not the first it is the second most common breast. can you tell me which is the breast. first breast carcinoma is the most common okay now very important there is a classification of this particular carcinoma now see most importantly that we are going to study today we are going to see about the epithelial tumors but for example there are different kinds of heading so the first heading we are having epithelial tumors of the cervix the second heading we are having the mesenchymal tumors of the cervix then we are having mixed tumors in case of the mixed tumors we are having both epithelial and the mesenchymal component together then we have the melanocytic tumors germ cell tumors and we have the lymphoid tumor so these are the different classes but out of them if you if in the exam for example if you want to say this is the one which is most important at the mbbs at the undergraduate stage that you should remember so among the epithelial tumors we are having two important headings three important headings if you see uh, number one if you see there is a squamous tumors and the precursors of the squamous tumor glandular tumor and its precursors are there and then there are certain other tumors so among this squamous tumors and its precursor we are having squamous intraepithelial lesion wherein right now we have just read na about the h cell and the l cell okay then the invasive carcinoma that occurs 80% most common cervical cancer out of all the cervical cancer cases 80% of the cases are squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix nos not otherwise specified okay and lastly we are having certain benign squamous lesions for example the papillomas and the warts so these are all the tumors squamous tumors both benign and malignant along with the precursors okay so this is the precursor this is the malignant this is the benign lesion similarly we are having the second important epithelial tumor component that is the glandular tumor and its precursor so among the glandular tumor the precursor lesion is your adeno carcinoma in situ okay adeno carcinoma in situ ais now among the malignant lesion of the glandular part we are having the adeno carcinoma which is the second most common cervical carcinoma the second most common cervical carcinoma is your adeno carcinoma thirdly we are having the benign glandular lesion that is these are your benign lesions for example endocervical polyp is there okay 
lastly we are having uncommon tumors which are contributing just 5% of all the cervical epithelial tumors these are your adenosquamous carcinoma and neuroendocrine tumors of the cervix now these tumors which are accounting just 5% they rapidly progress and they are having a far less favorable prognosis so at least this much about the cervical tumors you should remember these are the epithelial tumors that you cannot you know skip now the mesenchymal tumors they are some you know soft tissue lesions like rhabdomyoma rhabdomyosarcoma leiomyoma leiomyosarcoma in the mixed tumor we are having carcinosarcoma wherein both your epithelial and mesenchymal component is mixed then we can have certain melanocytic tumors germ cell tumors or lymphoid or lymphoproliferative disorders involving the cervix as well is the classification part crystal clear to everyone Yes, sir. Okay, it should be very, very easy. At least this much you should remember. And whatever I have told you, none of the questions are going to come out of this. Okay, so blindly just follow these notes. Okay, this should be your Bible. Okay. Now, if you look at the morphology, if you look at the morphology, that is the gross features of cervical carcinoma. So the invasive cervical carcinoma. Okay, they are manifesting as a fungating or exophytic growth. Sometimes they might exhibit a infiltrative mass also. so let me show you the gross image so tell me what is this what is this tell me what is this this is the cut open section of the uterus yes that we have appreciated over here now what what are these portions these are the fallopian tube plus the ovary part is there okay now along with that what we see over here if you can appreciate normally over here it would have gone somewhat like this normal yes okay. sir but over here do you see any any abnormality exophytic mass yes exhibiting yes, areas sir. of hemorrhage necrosis abnormal irregular mass so this is your invasive invasive exophytic exophytic cervical carcinoma why am i telling you because in the aims they might give you some diagram there at least you should basically your anatomy is clear you should be able to understand these things okay okay so this is the tumor basically this is the cervical carcinoma then they might ask you questions with regard to that so it is very important that you understand first what they are speaking about so invasive cervical carcinoma as we have seen now microscopically as i told you the most common variety was squamous cell carcinoma accounting for 80% of them so they are basically they are comprising nests and tongues of malignant squamous epithelium which are having polygonal cells they may or may not produce keratin so they can be keratinizing or non keratinizing uh, 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 squamous cell carcinoma which is having the most important feature is invasion of the cervical stroma okay so let me just show you this diagram so that it becomes clear now can you appreciate over here this is the basement membrane this is the basement membrane and can you see a part of tumor has come out yes so we will say this is the invasion that is occurring this was basically an h cell okay this was an h cell a carcinoma in situ and basically we can appreciate the invasion of the cervical stroma yes everyone can see there is an early invasion okay showing an invasive nest which is breaking through the basement membrane of high grade squamous cell intraepithelial lesion okay h cell okay this is your invasive keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma now you can see these are all nest these are all nest of malignant squamous epithelial cells showing what is this characteristic thing called as the squamous pearls as we can see the keratinization is there so it is called as invasive keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma is it very clear to everyone okay then we also told that very less amount of tumors okay like the adenosquamous carcinoma and the neuroendocrine tumors accounting for 5% of all the uh, epithelial tumors okay so over here as we will see the adenosquamous why we are calling it as adenosquamous because this part this part is like a squamous cell carcinoma and this part if you see they are having glands so they are mimicking adenocarcinoma so this is your adenosquamous carcinoma with distinct glandular and squamous differentiation present so these are rare tumors but these are rapidly progressive and has a very 
uh, aggressive clinical course now this is a neuroendocrine tumor of the cervix it is also commonly encountered it is a high grade tumor uh, it is uh, very much like the small cell neuroendocrine carcinoma of the lung so you can see dense population of very small cells with hyperchromatic nucleus and numerous mitotic figures are present you can see a lot of mitotic figures are present stating that the tumor is highly infiltrative and uh, highly it is proliferative in nature and you can see a lot of necrosis also over here so small round blue cells numerous mitosis with necrosis it's a neuroendocrine carcinoma and it is again a high grade tumor with a high propensity to uh, you know progress is this very clear to everyone adeno uh, adenosquamous and uh, squamous as well as neuroendocrine tumor now we will discuss about the adenocarcinoma yes, now adenocarcinoma as i told you they will be having you know large hyperchromatic nucleus and relative mucin depleted cytoplasm you will see you will see presence of uh, glands lined by atypical nucleus let me just show you this is the classical adenocarcinoma of the cervix now if you see over here why have i shown you this what is this this is a normal uh, endocervical gland this is a normal gland look at the nucleus nucleus is small it is normochromatic compare it with this gland this gland which is larger yes you can appreciate can you also appreciate the nucleus they are hyperchromatic dark glands and there is a nuclear pseudo stratification is there one nucleus is on top of the other so this is basically a adenocarcinoma in situ with dysplastic glands okay whereas over here if you see on the second image there is an invasive adenocarcinoma wherein these cells have back to back arrangement now over here in between the two glands some stroma is present but over here can you appreciate any kind of a stroma bet between them between the two glands can you see any stroma so this is characteristic yes. called as back to back arrangement it is very similar to the endometrial carcinoma that we had read in the previous lecture back to back glands are present so that means there is no stroma in between that means there there, there is an invasion is this very clear can you see this is one gland another gland no stroma in between that means this is invasive carcinoma okay invasive adenocarcinoma of the cervix okay so let me just uh, see if any other point is left or no aha uh -huh. then advanced cervical carcinoma if you see they are spreading by direct extension into contiguous contiguous areas means those areas which are in continuity with the normal uterus for example around the uterus some para cervical soft tissue or bladder involvement or ureters are basically involved if the ureters are compressed it might lead to hydronephrosis it might involve the pouch of douglas going into the rectum and also into the vagina now there is something called as a lymphovascular invasion local and distant metastasis can be seen distant metastasis to the liver lungs bone marrow and other organs are also very common okay now we will go through the staging now staging becomes very important in case of mcqs so let me just guess it is a very easy kind of a classification so any kind of carcinoma in situ or the precursor lesion the h cell we are labeling it as stage 0 okay now carcinoma stage 1 at least you remember these things stage 1 is those tumor those carcinoma which is confined to the cervix they are on the cervix only they have not gone beyond the cervix stage 2 tumors are those where the carcinoma has gone beyond the cervix but it has not extended to the pelvic wall and the carcinoma involves the vagina but not the lower third of the vagina the lower third of the vagina is not involved if you look at the stage 3 the carcinoma has involved the pelvic wall okay and the tumor involves the lower third of the vagina that becomes stage 3 and stage 4 as in any tumor when they uh, not in any but in most of this fgt tumors that we are seeing they should involve metastatic dissemination is there but along with that in the fgt tumors they should involve the mucosa of the bladder and rectum so metastatic dissemination no doubt is stage 4 but also mucosa of the bladder or rectum involvement it is regarded to, as a stage 4 tumor is this very clear to everyone now you yes, can go into the details of the stage 1 if you can remember well and good i have no problem i will be more than happy that you can remember but mostly for post graduates we are asking them to remember these details but for you all this information is important because questions from these portions even in your obstetric gynecology is asked okay so again the stage tumor can be the one tumor can be divided into 1a and 1b okay so pre 1a tumor can again be subdivided into a1 
and A2. So what is A1? When the stromal invasion is no deeper than three and no wider than seven. And A2 is when the stromal uh, invasion is deeper than three, but it is not deeper than, than five. And the horizontal invasion is no more than seven. One B is basically, if you see the carcinoma confined to the cervix, but if it is greater than one A2, then it becomes one B. Okay. So this is all about the staging of the cervical carcinoma. Looking at the clinical features, you have to understand that more than one half of the invasive cervical carcinomas are detected in women who did not participate in regular cervical carcinoma screening. Okay, very important. So, do you think in our country we are having any program in place for cervical carcinoma? Yes. You have PSM now. You are re reading preventive and social medicine now in the second year. Yes. Do you know about any program? Go back and read and tell me in the ne next class which programs are there in place in our country for uh, your cervical carcinoma screening. Okay. So remember, squamous invasive squamous cell carcinomas can be treated by cervical cone excision. This is basically they are speaking about the eighth cell. Okay, alone. Most invasive carcinomas are managed by hysterectomy along with lymph node dissection for the advanced lesions. So for early invasions, you can go for your cone excision, but for advanced lesions, you have to remove the uterus along with lymph node dissection followed by radio chemotherapy. Now prognosis again depends on the stage of the cancer. Greater will be the stage, bad will be the prognosis and also depends on the histological type. For example, the small cell neuroendocrine type tumor as I showed you is a high grade tumor with a very bad prognosis. Now with current treatment, if you see the five year survival rate is 100% for superficially invasive squamous cell carcinoma and less than 20% for tumor extending beyond the pelvis. Okay. And most patients with advanced cervical carcinoma, they die of the consequences of local tumor. In for example, if they are basically, uh, you know, they're obstructing the uterus, it might lead to hydronephrosis. And because of hydronephrosis, infections like pyelonephritis, then kidney failure, uremia, increased creatine count will be there rather than the distant metastasis. So it is the local tumor invasion, which is far more lethal as compared to your distant metastasis. So is this, is this point crystal clear to everyone? Yes. Okay. So then today we are going to conclude over here and tomorrow morning, we are going to start with the cervical carcinoma screening. We are going to read how we are taking, making the pap smear. We are going to understand what screening programs we have in our country and in, and uh, what uh, are the recommendations given by the world health organization for screening. And we will read about the vaccines, which are available for prevention of HPV infection. Do you know name of the vaccines? Can anyone tell me the name? Have you all taken this vaccine? Both boys and girls have to take HPV vaccine. Have you taken up till 26 years of age? You can take. No, sir. Yes. No, sir. yes. Someone no, is saying. No, sir. Okay, so. Have you heard about this Seravarix and Gardasil? So if you are not, so if, Seravarix, I have heard. if you are not, if you are less than 20, I'm speaking about both boys and girls. It is a wrong notion that HPV is only prevalent in case of, uh, you know, uh, in, in girls. No, very importantly, there are two vaccines available, Seravarix and Gardasil. Okay. Very importantly, if you are not 26 years, if you're less than 26 years of age, you can go and take this vaccine. Okay. So go and get yourself protected. 